Welcome to my latest Warhammer 40k battle report. The Necrons are emerging, reanimating, burrowing up from underground all across this planet. And all across this planet, Adeptus Mechanicus facilities are going dark. So, in this 2000 point battle report, I'm actually not playing Necrons, I'm playing Adeptus Mechanicus. Yes, the Penitent Forge is back on the battle grid. I'm really trying to make them work. So, I thought, what army to put them up against? It's Necrons. Necrons are easy, right? They're not winning everything right now. But fortunately, my opponent today is very lovely. And we welcome back to the channel, Swamp Song. Say hi, Swamp Song. Hi, Swamp Song. And you've brought a nice, mixed, generous Necron army along. Yeah, that's yes, that's true. Yeah, you've been yeah. here before. When you were here before, I didn't even have the Necrons. I took some <laughs> inspiration, so no. thank you. No, pleasure. But you've got a YouTube channel now. I have, yes. Yeah, that's uh, RGB Miniatures, which some people may have seen. I'm not sure, but yeah. RGB Miniatures on YouTube. Yeah. What do you do? Tell people about the uh, things. It's sort of... Well, mainly t painting tutorials and sort of a bit of a hobby vlog and yeah, just a bit of everything really. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. And this is 2000 points of Necrons. Gorgeous Necrons. I really like what you did with all the greenery and all the stuff. Uh, where did you get the inspiration to do an army like this? Um, right. So it was just uh, a lockdown project in, during the first lockdown in the UK. And um my we were going out for a lot of walks in the woods near our house yes and i literally had the beginnings of the army at home all gray plastic and yeah so that's kind of where the idea came from so there'd be the idea of them being stuck uh sort of immobile and not working for maybe you know millions of years and having all the plant life left and growing up all over them and you know sort of moss and everything moss yeah. mold things like that yeah. for millions yeah. of years and then, and then one day they just turn something on something which i haven't worked out exactly what it is is turned <laughs> them all back on again and now they're yeah all running amok fall of cadia the breaking of the pylons that's the excuse for my dynasty yeah, okay. the that, dynasty. Sounds, that sounds reasonable yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's go with that so what detachment are you running today uh it is the awakened dynasty detachment right. which uh basically gives anything any unit that's got a character attached to it, to it a uh, plus one to hit. Yes. And it also means that the strats, the strats that you're using on them have an extra an extra rule on top as well. Nice. So they, yeah, so it just, just basically enhances everything if they've got a character attached to them. Okay, so you're hitting better if you've got characters attached and there's four characters. And of course, Necrons, reanimate. Yep. Beautiful. You've brought a big, nasty Catan along, the Nightbringer, which is absolutely terrifying. Half some damage, four up in vulnerable safe, five up feel no pain. And he reanimates. I don't know what they were smoking when they came up with the rules for the Nightbringer, but he's going to be an absolute beat stick in this battle report. And what else have you brought along? Right, so we've got... The main bulk of it is uh, three lots of warriors. Okay. Um... One, uh, all of 20. 20. Um, so, um, got one unit with the Gauss Reapers. Yes. And then two units with Flayers. Okay. Um, and they are going to be attached to each of these. They're going to be a character attached to each of them as well. Okay. So giving them some bonuses. Um, and then a 10 man blob of Lich Guard. Yes. Which will have the Overlord with them, which okay. has got a Resurrection Orb and uh, Veil of Darkness. So at some point they can jump somewhere. Nice, okay, yeah, that gives them the re redeployment thing. And when yeah. you say characters attached to the warriors, we have a Royal Warden. Royal Warden, yep, yeah. so he allows them to uh, break out of combat and shoot and nice. potentially charge again as well. Okay. Um, the Technomancer Witch gives them a 5 plus feel no pain. Nice. Um, plus something else I can't think of. You gave him the enhancement which gives oh, him yes. a 4 so, yes, so he, no yes, he has got an. an uh, how are we pronouncing that? Ign Dermal Bond, which gives him a 4 plus feel no pain as well. Dermal. It's an yeah. unpronounceable <laughs> Necron yes, thing. Yes, yeah, that's so the So he's got yeah. a 4, he's Technomancer, 5 up feel no pain thing, and then there's the Plasmancer. The Plasmancer, right? who can chuck out some mortal wounds, yeah. and yeah, so again, so they're all going to be attached to each of the, uh, the warriors, yeah. So 60 warriors moving around. Attaching characters to them is good as well, because warriors normally hit on 4s, so with characters... Yeah, so with these ones, they're hitting on 3s, three, which is good. I don't yeah, know how so. I'm going to get rid of 60 reanimating warriors. I might be able to get rid of 20 by the end of the game. Nice. And Lich Guard are good too. Right, back here. Uh, yeah, so block of uh, Scorpic Destroyers. Yes. Um, again, just so, because it was very shooty, the rest of the army, so I wanted to have something extra just to kind of uh, get up close. Okay. Um, and then two, two three-man lots of... Uh, 
destroyers. Yes. Again, just give me some more shooting. Yes. Um, not particularly long range, but I find them always really effective. They're they always are really good. good. So I do yeah, like can't, them. Can't not bring them. Uh, and they've also got a there's a there's a heavy heavy destroyer in there as well. Okay. Just give them um, some anti tank. Nice. And uh, two doom stalkers. Again, more anti tank stuff. And uh, again, I can't not bring them because they are my favourite models and the army. Um, and the Nightbringer as well. Yeah. They're just uh, because he's fun and uh, he'll uh, hopefully do some damage. He is so. fun. He's a fire and forget missile. You can just throw him off exactly. the table yeah. and let yeah. him do whatever he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the Admech, I don't know if I'll be able to run away from him very much. Any anyway, he's going to do some work. Long range shooty with the big bots up here and with the heavy destroyer. But interestingly, the rest of your, sh rest of your shooty is very mid range. It is, yes. It's yeah. a very mid range yeah. army. So you're going to want to get up close and personal you do have some movement shenanigans with the redeploy with the veil of darkness mm. and uh destroyers can be deceptively quick as well because they move eight inches and i think the royal warden gives you assault weapons as well so it can be deceptively quick but a nice horde of mossy stinky are they stinky uh they could be yeah, they could be not? stinky yeah. if they've been in the swamp <laughs> for a while uh, Necrons pushing forward towards the Admech lines. And this is bang on 2,000 points worth of Adeptus Mechanicus without any enhancements whatsoever. Adeptus Mechanicus have Doctrina imperatives. So my whole army can either gain heavy for their guns or assault for their guns. You declare at the start of the battle round heavy or assault. And it can also affect the incoming or outgoing AP if certain conditions are met. And we'll talk about that as the battle continues. And today I have bought the Cohort Cybernetica Detachment. Uh, it doesn't, I have, see, it gives Cohort Cybernetica, gives the robots Doctrina Imperative, so they can have heavy and Assault as well, because they don't have it, the standard. But I haven't brought it along to give these guys Doctrina Imperatives, because I can't see them standing still at any point to get heavy. They might decide to run a little bit to get Assault if I stick to that one. The reason why I've brought along the Cohort Cybernetica is... There's lots of useful strats in that detachment that affect vehicles. And two units of vehicles, two more units of vehicles, things that allow your vehicles to fall back and shoot, or six up feel no pain for your vehicles, things like that. So that's why I brought it along. And also, in my journey of rediscovering the Penitent Forge one more time, I'm trying to strip down the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex so it's more manageable for me because it is quite complicated in places. It's not as complicated as 9th edition, but it's quite complicated in, in this edition, and there's some overlapping rules here or there. So by stripping out some of the complexity, it makes it a bit more manageable. Now, Admech, not doing very well right now. Fortunately, I'm going up against a nice rounded Necron force without triple Catans or double monoliths or stuff like that, or loads of Canoptic wraiths coming forward. So I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying there's a chance with this one. And I've also brought along eight big robots of Doom. These are good, but they're incredibly expensive. You're looking at like 800 points for these uh, eight models here. And maybe this will tip the balance. After the last battle report, I thought that this time, maybe, maybe the answer is more robots. So there's two Paragon of Metals leading each of the units. The Paragons have all the shooty guns. The guys in the backfield have all the punchy guns. Those guys that play Horus Heresy will know what I mean by Paragon of Metals, but there's no rules for them in 40k. I just like the idea of uh, some intelligent robots le leading around three other robots. I haven't got any data smiths with these guys to make them better. But what I have got is Designate 17, the 17th designated primary node of the Penitent Forge, a.k.a. Belisarius Call. Now, D17, or Belisarius Call, has got that Chapter Master ability, which means there's three separate abilities that he has, which he can give out to Admech units all around him, and you pick which ability he's giving out in the command phase. One of them is reroll hit rolls of one. So let's assume that I'll always have re-roll hit rolls of one in effect, unless I tell you guys otherwise. And I want to push him forward along with the eight robots, because they hit on fours. Most of the Admech force here hits on fours, which is why you really need that heavy ability and stand still, shoot better. So these guys hitting on fours, re-rolling hit rolls of one if D17 is nearby, maybe they'll be okay. 
Uh, he can't attach to any unit, but if he's he gets lone operative if he's within three inches of any admex stuff, so he can't be targeted unless you're within 12, if he's within range of admex stuff. And he's quite a beast himself. He can heal. He's got a four up and vulnerable save. He's, he's Belisar is cool, aka D17. He's, he's a bit of a tank. Um, shooting, shooting wise, a unit of breaches. Breaches reroll hit rolls of one when they shoot. If they're next to a battle line unit, they reroll all hit rolls when they shoot. And they're again hitting on fours, but rerolling hit rolls of one will help them out, particularly if they're heavy at the time. And I've put a Dominus with them, which gives them a five up feel no pain because these guys, yes, they're relatively tough, but they only have three wounds, so damage three weaponry. You're Tend to be picking them up quite quickly. So a five up feel no pain with them this time. And they can bring the pain a little bit. And I've got three uh, Robo Chickens in the backfield. The Iron Strider Ballastari. And they've all got the Auto Cannons. They're hitting on fours as well. So they really want to stand still despite their movement. With three damage weaponry as well. So we've got the Breachers and the Chickens for all the Daka. And then Dragoons. For a bit more punchy going forward, a unit of three along with a robot. I think if you really want to make the Admech sing and make them strong, there's so few good units in the Codex right now. So I would probably triple out on the Breachers because they're pretty good. And I would probably triple out on the Dragoons and triple out on the Iron Striders and then go from there. These are relatively cheap for what they do. So and relatively tough. Yeah, they're good units. And then over here, a couple of units of battle line infantry, three units of three doggos. Uh, these are just not very good. But what they can do is move block. They can score secondaries. They can speed round all. The these these are going to be doing the heavy lifting. These are actually going to be doing the scoring for me, while everything else attempts to bring some pain. More importantly, I'm really enjoying exploring the Adeptus Mechanicus again. I love my Admech, and it's great to get them on the table one more time. Let's go on to the plunder. One minute before we go any further. Battle map from uh, urbanmaps.com. They're the ones. Scenery no longer available from the places I got it from. And this is what we're playing. We're playing hammer and anvil with taken hold. So 5, 10, 15 on the primary. Lengthways, because I haven't done lengthways in a very long time. With chilling rain. The rain's not just raining. It's chilly, you know. All the... <laughs> Which means no additional rules apply. So lengthways 5, 10, 15, and we'll draw the secondaries from the secondary mission deck. After deployment, the swampy green Necrons of Doom are back here with the Lich card right in the corner because a Veil of Darkness, they can teleport anywhere. And then using all the line of sight blocking terrain, keep uh, the Necrons safe from much of the incoming firepower. Interestingly, both of our armies are, are quite mid range. We've got some long range DACA. The Doomstalker's up this end and the Iron Strine Ballastari at the other end, but the, the rest of it, not so not so long. Anyway, spread out across the line. Big squad of 20, big squad of 20, big squad of 20. Technomancer has joined this unit, the Warden, this unit, the Plasmancer, that unit. Nothing in reserve for the Necrons, and I have put one unit of Robo Doggies in reserve, in strategic reserve, to swing on later on. Uh, down in the middle, robots just ready to push forward with uh, Designate 17. And the chickens trying to command some uh, field of fire. I've held the breaches, moved them around here to avoid getting shot at by Doomstalkers in turn one because they can one-shot these bad boys. And there's a unit of Vanguard, very aware of deep striking capabilities, looking behind us just in case some Necrons pull themselves out of the swamp back here. Interestingly, neither of us knows whether we want first turn or not. We had a conversation. I don't know. You don't know. No, I've no idea. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what Zinch says. After you, sir. That's a three. I rolled a five. It looks like it's Admec turn one. Designate 17 orders the Pendleton Forge to capture the enemy outpost. What's well, more of an intention rather than an order because that isn't going to happen in turn one. Cleanse objectives in no man's land, though. I'll be able to do that. Here we are at the end of the Admex movement phase. Uh, protector imperatives are in effect, which means guns have heavy. 
And in this case, it'll only really affect the robot chickens because getting down and having a look, we are in line of sight and range just of this Doomstalker here. And it'd be nice to at least stop hurting one. Maybe I'll kill it uh, in turn one. Uh, this unit of doggos are cleansing this objective and this unit of sulfur hounds are cleansing that objective over there. So that will be five points. Of course, there's an mate 17 is telling everyone in the middle to re-roll hit rolls of one. And I've moved around here with this unit of breaches because they moved. The heavy thing won't really come into effect, but I'm re-rolling all hit rolls because I have a unit of Vanguard nearby. And the only thing they can really see is the Nightbringer. And there's four of them that can see the Nightbringer. So let's start on him at least. So this is eight shots into the Nightbringer, hitting on fours. Rerolling the hits because of the battle line unit and strength eight versus toughness 11. I need fives, that's not bad. Four, four plus invulnerable saves. You fail every single that was one. not very good, no. Okay, well <laughs> that would normally be 12 damage, but you're half all damage. Got feel no pain. Five up, feel no pain. Okay, he takes five with six wounds. Okay, so the Nightbringer is already half dead, but I'm certain he'll be able to recover some wounds. Now I've only got one more thing in line of sight and range, and it's the Iron Strider Balistaris shooting down at this Canoptic Doomstalker over here. I am hitting on threes because they stay still with heavy, rerolling hit rolls of one because of D17, and I forgot the strength already. Strength 9 versus Toughness 8, but Sustained hits 1, look. So they go back in. Freeze to wound. And it is twin linked. So, that many wounds. Minus 1, but plus 1 with all the cover, so 3 up saves. You made some saves, yay! That's only 3 damage on the Canoptic Doomstalker. So tickle the Nightbringer, tickle the Doomstalker, move forward to cleanse a couple of objectives. And now we're going on to Necrons, turn one. And so the Necrons want to take the center of the battle grid with area denial. Very hard to do unless you want to deep strike a whole unit of Lich Guard right in the middle of all of my lines. Probably not going to happen. An overwhelming force kill units in range of objectives, such as those Sulphur Hounds that went running off on their own. Here we are at the end of the movement and reanimation phase for the Necron's Lich card. You can deep strike, staying back for now, keeping that card in your pocket. But the Nightbringer's reanimated two wounds, and this Doomstalker's back up to 11 wounds during the reanimation phase. And deciding not to jump forward in turn one and put your whole army in front of... Well, there's a lot of stuff here right now. I'm not stretched out enough right now, so not going for area denial. But there is a unit of doggos on this flank and silver hounds on that flank. And if they both are not there at the end of the shooting phase, that will be five points for killing units in range of objectives. Scorpic destroyers pushing forward a little bit around that side. And the only advancement is, is over here. This unit with the Technomancer ran around that way to put some pressure up the both the right and the left flank. But we're going to start off the shooting phase with this unit of destroyers trying to destroy the Sulphur Hounds down here. Hitting on threes. And they can reroll those ones. That's what destroyers do. Those are lethal, the rest are gonna wound on threes. And that's quite a lot of wounds. Seven wounds come through at minus two, two damage each. They have a five up and vulnerable save and two wounds. And I don't make any saves. Yep, they're wiped out. <laughs> From this flank over to this flank, this unit of warriors are lighting them up. Only five of them are in range though. Yep. Uh, so you're hitting on threes, because being led by a dude, six is a lethal. Rest of the shots, winning on fours. With cover, these are four up saves. One's dead, another one's dead, and there's one left on one wound. I tried to pull away so the Nightbringer couldn't see the Sulphur Hound, but the Nightbringer can see the Sulphur Hound, so he's gonna gaze of death him. Uh, you need a two, or is this number of shots? Number of shots. Sorry, number yes, of shots. Yes, so two. Two shots that hit on twos. One of them hits. Strength? Twelve. Wounds on a two, definitely. Hmm. So if I make a five up and vulnerable save, everything's going to be fine. I make a five up and vulnerable save, everything is fine. And curiously, uh, I think because he's the last one left in that unit, and because line of sight is a thing, I don't think he can see him with anything else. No. Which is good. Behind the Nightbringer and those warriors is a heavy destroyer. 
aiming at this robot down here. You stayed still, so you're hitting on a two. Yep. Yep. Bang, that hits. Strength. 14. Toughness, nine. Uh, that doesn't wound, that's mm. a two. Next to the Heavy Destroyer, the Canoptic Doomstalker, also targeting the robots. D6 plus one shots. The five shots. Now you would be hitting on fours normally, but it's heavy, you stay still, so hitting on threes. And you only mm. hit once. That is not good. Man, the swingy is all hell, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Wounds on a three though, really big powerful gun. And it wounds. Um, I need a five up and vulnerable save. I make a five up and vulnerable save. Interestingly oh. enough, on a six, they do reflect mortal wounds back to whoever shoots them. Doomstalker number two, rinsing and repeating. This time with four shots, and this time shooting at second unit of robots. Maybe you can hit this time. It'd be nice. Threes. You hit this time. Brilliant. Threes to wound. And you wound oh, all better, the time. Much better. I do have a bit of cover, so I'm looking for fours. Um, I don't get any fours. <laughs> So that is nine damage, which will kill a robot because they have seven wounds, unless a CP reroll one. I've got three CP. I didn't use any last turn. I ditched a cut. I might as well. I might as well. Yeah, Cheeky little it. CP reroll. Doesn't help me. Dead robot. I think they blow up as well. It doesn't blow up. Yeah, they do blow up. And interestingly enough, that is the end of turn one for the Necrons. Both of us with some very mid-range armies. You pick up three points for overwhelming force for killing a unit in range of an objective. So it's five yeah. points to three. But more than that, because I lost that unit and because I had to pull away from there to stop you getting the points, uh, I'm not in range of any of these object objectives in the start of my command phase in turn two. I'll only pick up five points for holding on to the home field objective back here for the Penitent Forge. So very little damage done on either side. In fact, the Penitent Forge hasn't killed anything yet. Just tickled a few wounds here or there. But hopefully, in turn two, we can start bringing the pain. So it's ten points to three where we had on the primaries, and the Pennant and Forge want to investigate signals. They like signals, do actions in the corner of battle grid, at the battle grid. They really like doing some signal stuff, sending signals all over the place. Assassinate, kill a character. I read that as try and take down the Nightbringer. Okay, so we're staying in heavy mode, and the unit of Sulphur Hounds that I kept in strategic reserve in order to zip up here and get some secondaries later in the game, got lost and appeared over in this corner. But at least they're investigating signals, so that will be two points for me. They, they, they were distracted by something beeping over here. Then the secondary order I have is assassinate, aka kill the Nightbringer. And all of the guns from here, from the Breacher Squad, are now in range of the Nightbringer and we're going to be hitting on threes because of the heavy thing. Because we stay still, re-rolling all hits, because of these guys nearby. And then I've got the chickens around here, which have also got all the shots down into the Nightbringer. Designate 17 and the unit of three robots advanced. So no shooting with them, but swarming all over that objective. Because as you can see, I'm not on the one on the left, not on the one on the right. And you need to score as many primary objectives as you can. But at least I've put something up in the center. And then after all the shots rattle into the Nightbringer, if he's not dead, I'm going to charge some robots in. It means the robots will be countercharged, probably, by the Scorpec destroyers down here. And it also means the robots will be in front of, let's face it, a lot of guns. <laughs> but if I can take out the Nightbringer in two turns, I'll consider that a win. I did spend also a CP on motive something. One minute. Motive imperative. You can add three inches to the move of a vehicle. Dragoons are vehicles. So instead of moving 10, they move 13 straight round here. The idea is to go charging into this unit of warriors and lock them up. I could have jumped on the objective to try and get it next turn for primaries, but these warriors would have just OC'd me off of there. So the best way to stop the warriors scoring it, I think, is to charge them there's no shenanigans here for full backing and shooting or charging or anything like that. So locking them up for a turn um, and keeping them on this flank, is that sounds like a tactic to me. Also, flanking is a thing. I read about it once. It's definitely got to do with battles and tactics. Um, spreading out in the backfield as well for some deep striking denial. But now we're going to move on to the shooting phase. Three Iron Strahler Ballastaris are going to shoot in at the Nightbringer. 
We are hitting on threes with the sustained hits one. There's no sustained hits there, but at least I get five hits through. And it is the Nightbringer. I need fives. I get three fives. Three, four plus in vulnerable saves. You made one this time. That is six damage. Do you want to command point it? Yes, I do. Okay. Command point. Reroll. He takes six no. damage. However, the three damage weapon becomes two damage weapons because you're half all damage. Yep, then right. you got the yep. feel no pains. Drop dice don't count. <laughs> Five up, feel no pains. Uh, he only takes three wounds. He's got to die. It's the Nightbringer. Let's fire all the breaches into him as well. I stayed still. So threes to hit. They become heavy. Re-rolling to hit because that synergy going on there. Strength eight versus toughness 11. Fives? Five, four plus in vulnerable saves. And you make four of them. So two feel no pains. Operation Kill the Nightbringer is still in effect. So the heavy phosphor blasters from the Cybernetica are going to fire in at him as well. Three shots each. We're hitting on fours. We're re rolling ones because Designate 17 is nearby. And that's really good shooting text. But it is strength six. So I need fives to. Oh. I used to wound. <laughs> minus one, two damage each. You don't care about the two damage, but you do care about all those wounds that came through. That's seven, four plus and vulnerable saves, and he's got three wounds left. Three left, yeah. Good luck. Uh, that is three wounds that get through. So three, feel no pains. You make one, feel no pain, and he'll be alive. Come on. He's not alive. <laughs> he's not alive. Does he blow up? He does, he's close to your guys, so don't roll a six, because he'll blow up and hurt your guys. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of the Nightbringer, and that is Assassinate. And that's the shooting from my entire army, in fact, <laughs> to try and take him back out. So now we're on to the charge phase, we're going to move around here, where a bunch of dragoons want to charge these warriors. I need a four, that's a four. The dragoons make it there, they have four attacks each. Sixes explode twice. It's strength seven, but with Lance, I'm winning on twos. Sixes, six up saves, 11 of them. Um, I killed nine warriors. Nine. And if anything, the Dragoons overperformed because you were able to draw enough away. So I'm not in combat anymore, yeah. even with some pile in shenanigans. So I haven't locked them up. Have managed to take this objective though. Was able to consolidate onto this objective that instead and that is the end of the penitent forges turn two killing a nightbringer that's 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 good that's glorious hurting this unit that's also glorious they'll be able to reanimate some stuff and they're warriors as well so you reanimate d3 and you can re-roll it i have taken a couple of primary objectives as well and then at the start of admech turn two sorry necrons turn two they're only going to pick up five points for the primary as well but this battle is a long way from over. Adding up all the points, it's 17 points to the Admech, 8 points to the Necrons, and the Necrons want to go forward and backwards, defend their stronghold backwards, get behind enemy lines forwards. After the Nightbringer has fallen, the Admech launch their counter-assault. Meanwhile, they're defending their home field objective down here, and with Veil of Darkness, the Lich Guard and the Overlord jump back here. So they'll achieve both of their secondary objectives this turn. With reanimation, two warriors went back into this unit here and the Doomstalker is all the way back up to full wounds as the living metal reforms and reanimates. And then there's some firepower that's going to ricochet down into the Dragoons. Some firepower that's going to hit the robots in the middle of the battle grid. And then Vengeance for the Catan. Even more firepower over here. Spending a CP on Protocol of the Sudden Storm, which gives all your weapons advance. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Assault weapons, sorry, and allowed you to re-roll it. So everyone's now in half range and everyone is going to be shooting at these robots down here. A lot of pain is going to come in. And then you've got the Scorpic Destroyers to jump on them if there's any left. Because there's also some more shooting from over here that can rain in. With some luck, with some stratagems, with some shenanigans, these cybernetic constructs might not be here at the end of this battle round.
Swan, Swan is also spelling another CP on Protocol of the Contouring Tyrant, yep. which is giving you re-roll all the hit rolls. Yeah, everything re-rolls, yeah. Down here. And there's a Plasmancer in this unit, so that means lethal hits kick off from fives instead that's, of sixes. That's right, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, fingers crossed. Let's okay. Do something. Uh, there's a nice gap here. So, threes to hit. Well, fives and sixes are nasty, and drop dice don't count. We lost two. So those are lethal so far, and then picking them all up, fishing for fives and sixes, rolling again. Yep, let's go for it. They all wound. These are the other hits, which need sixes as well to wound, and that's quite a lot of wounds. 22 wounds came through in the end. Now, uh, at minus one, I need three up saves, but sixes, sixes reflect back and kill Necrons because of the refactor field. So that's five Necrons dead, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a dead robot and another wound. The dead robot doesn't blow up. Um, but a unit warrior is being able to take down uh, one of the robots. That's, that's really good. That's quite strong. Okay, Plasmancer, doing living lightning, roll 46s. And on fours, that's mortal wounds to me. <laughs> so the robot's down to two wounds left, and then he shoots out his Plasmatic Lance. He hits on threes. And that is two hits, and he's going to wound on fives because he's a tough old thing. No wounds, but you've killed a robot and dropped one down to two wounds remaining. Behind the warriors, the heavy doom, the canoptic doomstalker is firing in down at the same squad. D6 plus one shots with its big gun of doom, and this time only two shots. Come on, boy. I have a command partner. Yes, <laughs> yes I have, definitely. Okay, back up to four. This is hitting on threes. I'm wounding on threes. We have three wounds. Uh, I need invulnerable saves of five plus. I make two of them. That will kill the robot. Uh, I'll let it go through because you've got another big shot coming in. Does it blow up? Doesn't blow up. That's two of the robots down. Next to the Doomstalker, the Heavy Destroyer, firing at the same target, hitting on a two with its exterminator. And that's a one. Brilliant. <laughs> and you've already done the CPV roll. From one side of the installation to the other side of the installation, second Doomstalker targeting the second unit of robots. D6 plus one shots for five shots, which will hit on threes. And we only have two hits. It'll wound on threes at least. Two wounds, yeah. two five plus in buns. That is six damage. One's down to one wound remaining. You're going to light me up with those heavy destroyers. I'm thinking about CP reroll. Mm. No, I've just got to take it. No, I'm going to reroll it. I've just looked over my shoulder. I had the CP. No, that didn't help me. Now the destroyers are firing at the robots as well. They're hitting on threes. The reroll didn't convert. Strength five versus toughness nine, so fives to wound. And that is five wounds. Minus two. I need. That kills the injured robot. That puts one down to three wounds remaining. The injured robot doesn't blow up. So two robots have been wiped out in one squad. Two robots have been wiped out in another squad. And now the last thing's left to fire are down on this flank here. We've got 26 gal shots coming into the dragoons. And because of stealth, you're going to hit them on fours. Sixes are lethal. That's a lot of lethal hits. Anyway, strength four versus toughness seven. So fives. And I have nine three up saves to make. Wow, I made every single save. Then the Staff of Light from the Technomancer did take one wound off the Dragoons. Now, last thing left to fire is the Heavy Destroyers firing into the Dragoons as well. These are going to hit on fours because of stealth. But you can re-roll all hit rolls because the Dragoons are in range of an objective marker. Re-rolling. Those already wound. These are fives to wound. And that is five wounds in total. Five, five plus in vulnerable saves. I make one, two, that is two, four, six damage, which is enough to kill the Dragoon in the backfield, which doesn't blow up either. We've had no explosions yet. I like explosions. As the legs of the Dragoon get disintegrated and it just topples down into the dust, that is the end of the shooting phase for the Necrons. But the pain train will keep on rolling because there's a couple of charges. The Lich Guard want to make a nine inch charge into the Vanguard over here. And the Scorpic Destroyers are going to go to this unit of robots. Where are we starting first, sir? Uh, let's start with the uh, Lich Guard. Nine inches? Yep, see if we can do it. Good luck. 
That's a 10. They're in. They're in. Shall we roll for the Lich Guard while well, you've got some dice in your hands as well? Sorry, the Scorpex, see how far uh, they yeah, go. go and the Scorpex go six inches, which is more than enough. So the Lich Guard end up like this. The uh, Scorpic Destroyers end up here. Because they made a charge, they're going to be re-rolling all hit rolls and spending the Plasma Sight to give them devastating wounds. And they hit on threes. Re-rolling. Only dropping four hits there. Now fives to wound. But sixes are devastating. And I'm not going to get a save. Two sixes. Dude, that was awful. After hitting really well, you wounded Yeah, didn't go, didn't go very well that time. Um, here's the armor saves on these. Fours. Uh, and that'll be two, four, six damage in total. Doesn't even kill a robot. Puts down one down to one wound remaining. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I run Scorpex every now and then with my Necrons. and I, yeah. mm. One thing that I don't run, though, is these Lich Guard. So I'll be very interested to see what they can do. Three attacks each. You're hitting on twos because you've been led by a dude. Only two misses with the hyperface swords, which is strength six and Vanguard of toughness three. So, winning on twos. That's a lot of wounds. This is better. It's Katari Vanguard. Five plus invulnerable saves. Um, there's ten of them. They're dead. They're definitely <laughs> dead, Dave. So the Lich Guard consolidate closer to that objective there. They've taken down their target, but the Scorpec destroyers didn't. And the Castellan robots can fight back. They have four attacks each. And they hit on fours. But Designate 17 is real nearby, telling them to hit better. That's good. And we are strength 12 with our Castellan fists, mm. and your toughness, six. Uh, six, yes. So this does wound on twos. It is twin linked anyway, but that is five wounds. And at minus two, you need five up saves. And you make two of them, but it's three damage a time. So that takes out three. Scorpec destroyers. So the Scorpec and the Castellan continue to fight at the end of Necron's turn two. And that was a pretty good turn. Revenge for the Nightbringer. Wiping out half of my robots down there. Killing an entire unit of Skitari Vanguard down here. Killing one of the Dominus, uh, the... Dragoons over here, plus they're defending their stronghold, plus they've got behind enemy lines. So I've got bad guys in front, bad guys to the left, bad guys to the right, Necrons all over the place as the Admec, the Penitent Forge, continue to push and defend these installations in the swamp and the mist. So the Necrons pick up three points for getting behind enemy lines. They're going to pick up another three points for defending their stronghold at the end of my turn. I'm not going to be able to get back to it, which will give them 14 points at the end of this turn. I'm up to 27 when I add on the primaries and I've got no prisoners killed stuff. And try and get behind enemy lines, which I won't be able to do. Okay, here we are after the movement phase and command phase for the cohort Cybernetica. Now a couple of things happened. The first thing... All the stratagems for the Cohort Cybernetica you do in the command phase. So one of the things I did was give these guys a six up, feel no pain. This unit of two robots, the benevolence, benevolence of the Omnissiah. And I've also given them machine spirit resurgence as well. So they can re-roll all hit rolls because they're below starting strength. And we're going to try and do something about some of these uh, destroyers back here. The other thing that happened in the command phase is I switched from Protector Imperative into Conqueror Imperative because I needed a move because I want to get away from these Lich Guard. So it gave all my weapons assault and the only unit that advanced forward is the unit of Iron Strine Balistari. It got a nice fat roll and they moved all the way up, up the table and they're potentially out of charge range from the Lich Guard. If I'd have stayed there, dead unit. Lich Guard are good. Uh, the other thing about giving them Conqueror Imperative for um, Assault Weaponry is if they shoot at units entirely within the enemy deployment zone, for example, those unit of destroyers that I'm staring right down the barrel of, it improves their AP, which is good because their OP is only uh, AP1. So this gets their AP up to AP2 when we go flying in that way. So the idea is to get rid of them. Designate 17 is going to try and save some of his creations around here by go charging into those unit of um, Scorpec destroyers. And then everything else is down on this flank. Operation stay away from the Lich Guard and try and kill this unit of warriors down here with a slim exception 
of a couple of Dragoons. If I can keep pushing those Warriors back and keep scoring this objectives, then those Dragoons are doing work. They'll be getting me some points. It does mean I'm caught in a Necron sandwich with units behind and units in front, but uh, we're okay. We're okay in the middle of the table. That's where the installations are for the Admech. So this is, and this is where Designate 17 is. So this is where we want to be. So let's start the shooting phase with the Iron Striders. Firing in at the destroyers. They have two shots each, so I'm hitting on fours. That's bad. I, even ones would have been good because I could have re-rolled ones being in range of designate 17, but only two hits and only one wound. And that is a five up save, sir. I fail the save. At least it's three damage. It does kill one of the destroyers. I didn't kill one because you're spending CP on protocol of the Undying Legion. So you roll a D3. And that's three, and you reanimate three so wounds back, back in that there. squad. Yeah. Yeah. So I shot one, and it just blended back together right, like the T-1000 <laughs> in Terminator 2. All right, then, let's shoot the Dacobots in at them. Hitting on fours, rerolling all hits because we over-erode the command protocols. Strength six versus toughness six, no wounds. Over onto Dacobots number two, they're vehicles, so they can shoot out. Let's shoot down into some warriors, but minus one to hit because we're currently in combat, re-rolling ones because they designate 17, and that is three hits. I'll wound those warriors on threes. That's two wounds. Good cover, two four up saves. Oh no, ignores cover. Five up saves. I kill one. So D17 fires this solar atomizer into infantry. It's an anti-tank weaponry. Why am I firing it into them? Can I actually see some of the guys over here with him? No, I can't see it. So I'm firing it into infantry. Um, it is D3 shots. For three shots, he's going to hit on twos, and he's in range of himself, so he doesn't need the reroll. Strength 14, it's anti-vehicle firing into infantry. I wound twice, and a minus four, three damage a time, no saves. Let's continue lighting them up. Let's hit them with all these breaches. The breaches are going to be hitting on fours, Rerolling everything. I don't understand why they shoot there. Just because some Skataria nearby. Anyway, strength eight. Two's to wound. Minus one, but plus one for cover. No, minus two, but by uh, minus two, but five up saves. Yes, five up saves. <laughs> right, five ups. Five ups. So there's three left with the Plasmancer. And then the Sulfur Hound fires in with his Mechanicus pistol. And that's really cold. It misses. Then the Hound itself has Sulfur Breath which auto hits D6 times, mm, okay. but it is strength three. So I need fives. I don't do any wounds. <laughs> and that is the end of my shooting phase. Essentially, I've wiped out a bunch of warriors. Yeah. Not much else. Uh, we're going to charge. Designate 17 wants to help his cybernetic constructs out. So he goes around there, okay? I've got a couple of long bomb charges that I'd really like to make, and I've got one CP. One with these breaches, because then I could take over that objective and potentially stop you scoring it. And one with the robots over here. I'd have hoped those destroyers were dead, but they're still there. Um, charging here with the breaches is more important, though, because it will stop you scoring that objective. So we're going to start here. I don't know how long the charge is, but it's long. And nine might be enough. Nine is enough. Nine gets them in. Awesome. Uh, and it's an 8-inch charge for the robots into destroyers. And that's a 7. Yeah, let's see if you re -roll. <laughs> And that's a 7. That's a failed <laughs> charge. We pile in. We're going to smack away with our arc claws. Fortunately, we're in range. Designate 17 because we hit on 4s. And because we're in range, we can actually re-roll some 1s. Strength 5. Minus one, one damage. They are anti-vehicle, but I'm smacking warriors. Definitely not any vehicles. Lots of five-up saves coming up. One damage a time. There's a load of five-up saves. So how many warriors were left? Three? Uh, three warriors, yeah. So that will kill the three warriors. And Plasmancer actually, is four wounds. that kills the Plasmancer yeah, as well. that's it. That takes out the squad. That's the first unit of warriors down, and honestly, when you start focusing on Necrons, you need to keep going and going and going and wipe out a unit entirely. Otherwise, they're just going to rebuild themselves, and I needed that objective. I need to take it, because I'm giving up my home objective down here. Uh, now we're going to have the charge. Designate 17 into Scorpec Destroyers. 
First up, he's going to smack with his Omniscian Axe, which hits on twos, and he's in range of himself, so he re-rolls the one. Call is quite strong. He's strength eight, so he's going to wound them on threes. He only wounds twice. Two five-up saves, and that no. kills one of the Skullpeck Destroyers. Extra attacks with his Arc Scourge. Reroll in the ones, and these are strength five. So these need sixes to wound this time, so Fury at fives to wound. That's two more wounds. At minus one, two more. Four up saves. You make the saves. But he's got even more attacks. Do d6 extra attacks with his Mechadendrite Hive. And he hits on twos and rerolls ones. Everything hit after the reroll, and he wounds on fives. AP dash, five thrip saves. One damage a time. I put one down and one wound. Okay. So Belisarius Call only kills one destroyer and injures one. And it was at this point that I forgot a charging unit. So I'm going to do the charging unit now, if that's okay. Absolutely, Thank yeah. you, Swamp Song. They go charging it. Okay, that's going to go charging in like that. Now let's hit with some Dragoons. On fours, sixes explode twice. With Lance, winning on twos. Oh, mama. These are all six up saves. And it's two damage a time. And we remembered that the Technomancer gives them a five up feel no pain. So we'll do lots of feel, I've got feel no pains off camera. At the end of all the feeling of the pains, five of the warriors died. We're consolidating, piling in. It looks like this over here. And now the Necrons fight back. There's eight attacks with the Scorbeck Destroyers going into the murder box, hitting on threes. And then re-rolling ones. There's no ones. No ones. Uh, five five is five, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Four wounds this time. Much better than last time. And... It would have been nice if they were devastating with a plasma site, but he's no longer there. So, uh, four up saves. Okay, one was injured. Dead. The other one goes down to three wounds remaining. The injured one doesn't blow up. Then the last injured cybernetic construct punches back on fours and re-rolls ones and only one hit. There's a wound on a two. That wounds. You need to make a five up save or death. Not death. He's alive. We do have another fight over here with warriors punching dragoons, but they're unlikely to do anything. A few dice rolls later and one wound was put on a dragoon. Dragoon, and that is the end of Admech turn three. The Penitent Forge have taken the centre of the battle grid and managed to rack up their five points for no prisoners. We're certainly nowhere near behind enemy lines. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I needed to charge with the robots to get in there, to get behind enemy lines. But securing five points was worth more than securing three points by charging them in. And also the breachers clutching up over on that side have stopped Swamp Song from mm. scoring that extra yeah, five points. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are controlling that flank over there. But you have managed to defend your stronghold. Yep. Yeah. And you're all over my objective down here. And with the heavy destroyers untouched and both of the Doomstalkers untouched, there is still a lot of gun left in the Necron Force. And of course, these Scorpec destroyers are still battling it out with the robot down here. Adding up all the stuff and things, the Penitent Forger on 32 points, the Necrons on 19 points, and they want to deploy a Teleport Homer in my deployment zone. The Overlord with his Lich Guard. Should be able to do that quite easily. Get them a five points, get them an extra five points and extend battle lines. That one could be trickier. Uh, uh. In the command phase for the Necrons, Living Metal swam back together again, reanimating two of the warriors down here who were in combat with the Dragoons and have pulled back out of that combat and have completely healed up one of the Scorpec Destroyers, which is in combat with the last of the robots over here. Now you're not going to be extending your battle lines this turn because the Admech are all over the central objectives. But the Overlord with the Lich Guard is definitely deploying a teleport homer down that side of the battle grid. Then in the backfield, this Doomstalker and Heavy Destroyer stayed still. They've got some nice firing arcs over here. But round here, this Doomstalker had to move backwards so it's going to lose its heavy bonus to stand on the home field objective. While a protocol of the Sudden Storm was enacted one more time to allow these uh, warriors extra movement and their, their weapons become assault so they can shoot again. 
they're going to do the same thing that the warriors on the other flank did last time. Move forward, shoot loads of guns, try and take down these robots. Start with the locust destroyers here. Shooting at the dragoons one more time. Hitting on threes with their gauss cannons. Then we run the hits because they are in range of an objective marker. And there's a couple of lethals as well. Mm. Five to wound. Five to wound. I need to make four. Five plus and vulnerable saves. I don't make any. Five plus and vulnerable saves. Two damage a time. Two damage, yeah. So that'll kill this one. That'll put that one down to five wounds remaining. Explosion, please. No explosion. <laughs> Across the second unit of Lockhouse Destroyers, shooting at the robots. Yeah, you need it. threes to hit these guys. Six is a lethal. And they are in range of an objective marker, so you can reroll hits as well. Reroll didn't help you, wounding on fives. Five wounds, five, four up saves. Only fail one, and I gave that unit a six up, feel no pain. Mm. Okay, one takes two wounds. One is down to one wound remaining. Now we're doing the warriors next to the lockers destroyers, and you're spending that CP again, so you're re-rolling uh, all we, hits we again. Yeah. Freeze to hit. Six is the lethals. Here's the re-roll, fishing for as many sixes as you can. There's quite a lot of sixes. Then with standard hits, you need sixes to wound. Looking for more sixes, basically. There's another six. But no AP. No AP. No. Lots of two-up saves, then. Uh, that one's really cocked. I take a wound. Just one wound. I have one feel no pain to make. I don't make the feel no pain. That will kill the robot on one wound remaining. And he still doesn't blow up. Now the Royal Warden from that squad, he'll hit on twos. And he's got the full reroll. There's a lethal. Uh, and you need fives to wound with this gun because it's a bit strong. Two wounds, minus one. Um, make one, fail one. And it's two damage. Uh, two damage, yeah. And I fail the feel no pains. That last robot is on five wounds remaining. So the Doomstalker wants to polish him off. D6 plus one shots for six shots. Uh, you're hitting on fours though, because he yeah, moved. He hits oh. twice. Wounds on twos. It's a very big gun. They both wound. Uh, it is enough to kill it. So five of them guns, first of all. No, it's not enough to kill it. I make my invulnerable save. And with that six, I keep forgetting, sixes ricochet back. Put a mortal wound on the Doomstalker. On to Doomstalker number two, firing down at the breaches, trying to thin them down. D6 plus two because of last number of shots. And that is eight shots, which hit on threes. And wound on twos. I need six up and vulnerable saves. And each failed save kills a breacher. For actually, no, no, I put the Dominus with them, which gives them a five up, feel no pain. So the first guy is still alive. Second shot, right now he's dead. Third shot, he's dead. So it's two dead. And the third guy, okay, you killed two, put one down to one wound, uh, two wounds remaining. What are you doing with the heavy destroyer then? Right, he is going to fire into the robot. Is he? And Fingers crossed, kill it, and then free up the uh, score guys. Okay. Fingers three, crossed. Three's to hit. Three's going to miss again. Well, he misses again. again. That's again, twice again, in twice, a row. Twice. You've rolled a one for that bad boy. And I've got no command points. You've got no, no command points. Okay, no. I think that's the end of your shooting phase. That is the end of my shooting phase. So we are on to the fight phase. Are you charging anywhere? I don't think you probably want to. No. No? I don't think so. No. Okay. So we'll do my robot, which is locked up in combat with those Scorpec, uh, those, yeah, Scorpec destroyers. I'm hitting them on fours and re-rolling ones. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. At strength 12, I'm winning on twos and they're twin linked and that's good as well. Scorpecs need four or five up saves. You make two, fail two. Three damage a time, there was only two left. The robot wipes them out. With the last Scorpec ripped apart, that's the end of Necron's turn three. They've deployed a teleport homeward down in the Admex backfield, which gets them up to 24 points to the Admex 32. But in my turn, I'm going to be on five, 10, 15 points for being on three objectives. So long as this fella down here passes a battle shock test, so I'm going to spend a CP on that once per battle insane bravery thing. So he automatically mm -hmm. passes his battle shock test and maximize my primary objectives as we go into Admech turn four. 
Adding up those 15 points on the primaries, the Admech are taking a commanding lead up to 47 points. And they want to deploy a teleport homer as well. I can do that in the centre of the battle grid because I can't engage on all fronts. So I'm going to burn a CP to get another order. Overwhelming force. Kill Necrons in range of objectives. So for my Doctrina Imperative, I switched back to Heavy and both of these shooty units have stayed still. So Heavy's good. We'll be hitting on threes. Moving designate 17 rounds. So we're going to be re-rolling hit rolls of one. And this robot passed its battle shock test. I mean, I passed all the battle shock tests it's called upon to make, including the insane bravery over here. And uh, he's deploying the teleport home. I like to think that there's like there's a whir and a chunk and a big blinky beacon falls out of his backside and drops on the central objective there. There's deploying a teleport home. The other robot, however, I've continued to give him the six up feel no pain and he's going downtown. It's going to cause some trouble. The dragoon around this flank doesn't want to touch these guys anymore because he'll die. And also he'll come off of the objective. Don't want to come off of the objective. Then around this side, the vanguard and the doggos advanced up round this way uh, to make sure that I'm in six inch range of the unit of breaches. So I've got reroll hit rolls. The plan here is, I'm not going to get overwhelming force, but the plan is to take down one doomstalker, take down one unit of destroyers, and that would take away quite a bit of shooty from the Necron force, leaving the Lich Guard to it back on my home field objective and trying to dominate the center of the battle grid. So we're going to start the shooting phase with the Iron Striders into the Locust Destroyers. I'm going to hit them on threes and reroll ones and wound them on threes. And they're not wholly within their own deployment zone anymore. That's only two wounds. So that means they have two four up saves. And that failed save will kill one. Are you going to reanimate again? Yep. Do the thing yep. where you reanimate again yeah, after taking a hit. That, see okay. If we can keep him in. And you keep him in. Two more wounds okay. back on. So instead of killing it, I drop one down to one wound. No, two wounds. And then the breaches around this side is going to fire at that Doom Stalker. We're going to hit it on threes, reroll ones. No, reroll everything because of the battle line unit nearby. Anti vehicle, four plus. That is three wounds, three four plus invulnerable saves. You make two of them. That's only three damage. So the Doomstalker is on nine wounds remaining. Haven't killed anything in my shooting phase yet. So let's try and kill something down here. In fact, it's the last thing left to shoot because he's deploying a teleport homer. The other guy's out of line of sight and range. So it's just this robot. I think I need to kill those destroyers. So let's shoot them with my Phosphor Blaster. Everything hits and he forced a wound. One wound. Save. No. Further save. That is two damage. So the it's one you reanimated one is, gone. is gone. And then we charge. And the robot is going to charge that unit as well. And we make the charge. But can I kill anything? Hitting on fours. I hit three times. Brilliant. Winning on twos with his castell and fists. I wound three times. So that is three five up saves of the last two destroyers there. Causing three damage a time, and that's the squad. That's the... Then, for a moment there, I thought about piling into this unit of warriors to tie them up, but then I remembered you got a Royal Warden with them. Yeah. So you can fall back and shoot and charge and do what you want with a Royal Warden, so no point piling into them. That is the end of my turn four. I killed one unit. Killed one unit. I deployed a teleport homer down here, and that's about it. And... Instead, just trying to lock down the middle of the battle grid. So I'll get three points for deploying a teleport home where the Necrons in turn four will pick up five, ten on the primaries. Is there a comeback here for the ancient Xenos warriors? Well, let's find out what their orders are in Necrons turn four. So it's 50 points to the Admech and 34 to the Necrons. They're 16 points behind, but capture enemy outpost is worth eight points. And they're all over the enemy outpost. They also want to engage on all fronts. So down here in the Admech deployment zone, the Overlord, where we captured the enemy outpost ages ago. <laughs> and shuffling around this way, because with him shuffling around this way and the units in the Necron backfield, you're engaging on three fronts for three points. So that'll be 11 point swing for the Necrons. And then only a couple more units moved. First up, this unit of warriors advanced round here to take the objective off the Dragoon. It means they're not shooting or charging, no. 
but that's a five point swing i won't be scoring that one and then the last unit of destroyers swung around this way to target either the daca bot or down into the robo chickens behind the warriors getting ready to unload hell and the doom stalkers and the last heavy destroyer staying still staying still because they have heavy weaponry and with the admech pushing ever closer to the necron lines they need to use all the firepower they can so starting off with a big swarm of warriors protocol of the concrete tyrant enacted one more time to re-roll all the hits and shooting at this robot three to hit we want sixes you want sixes lots of sixes re-rolling them all fishing for sixes and then sixes to wound it's a lot of sixes so i need to make many two up saves last time i made many two up saves this time i make many again six up feel no pain i take a wound that's exactly what you did last mm. time yeah those uh gauss reapers aren't what they were gauss flares aren't what they were i definitely prefer gauss reapers so robot on four wounds remaining so shooting the locker destroyers in yep hitting on threes and winning on fives the sixes are already lethal minus two minus two so yeah. five four up saves uh that is six damage i did give it the feel no pain thing uh i need to roll a few sixes i don't roll enough sixes that is a dead robot no explosions no explosions yet no, no. so the doomstalker firing past the wreckage of the robot into this dragoon d6 plus one shots that's seven shots the, uh, the laser beam is warmed up and firing well now. Well, actually, does it fire well? Can it hit on threes? Drop dice don't count. It, it's meh. Well, it misses three times. That's not so great. It could have been better. Strength yeah. 14, toughness 7. It wounds on twos. Wounds all the times. Five up and vulnerable saves. No. <laughs> That's 12 <laughs> damage. It's only got five left. Does this one blow up? Please blow up. Nothing's blowing up. <laughs> From Doomstalker number one to Doomstalker number two, firing at the breaches one more time. And maximum number of shots again. There is five in that squad. So that is eight shots coming in hot. Which hit on threes. And that is not good. Not that good. is, you miss half of the shots. Two's to wound. Six plus and vulnerable saves. I make three sixes and then there's a feel no pain of five up on the injured fella. Well, at least you killed the injured fella. So we're on to the brilliant heavy destroyer. Yeah, which I He's, think has, has he actually hit anything? I yet? think he hit in the first turn, but I don't think he actually did anything in the other two he's missed. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. Okay. Fingers crossed. Roll a one, please. Please don't get a one. You okay. you hit. He actually you hit. Something. He's shooting the destroyers, right? Uh yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh wounds on a three. He doesn't, doesn't wound. wound. He doesn't wound. <laughs> One minute, strength 14, it yep. does wound. So it does. He think, does a yeah, wound. Yeah. He does a wound. Six up and vulnerable save. He does a wound, and that is six damage. I have a lots of feel no pains on them, and a, a, it's six damage, two more. Okay, he does. He kills a breacher. Oh, thank Yeah, thank he, you. He did he something. did something, you know. So that's the end of turn four for the Necrons. There's no charges coming on, and you get capture any enemy outposts and engage on all fronts for 45 points to 50. So yep, you're only five yep, points behind yep, now. Yeah, definitely improvement. And you're going to score your primaries at the very end of the turn, because mm. you went second. You are five points behind, and this is the footprint of my entire army. I got some breaches. I've got some. I've got. I've got these guys. That's it. So even though uh, it's been tough for the Necrons up to this point, you're definitely winning the war of attrition. Mm, yeah. And I'm going to get five, ten points for these objectives, but I've got to pass some battle shock tests first. Mm. So let's roll that on camera. So leadership seven for the robot, just checked it over there. Okay, leadership, I passed, that's five points. And a seven for the breaches to get five points. That's a 12, okay, we pass, we pass our battle shock tests. Right, so adding on the primaries, it's 60 to 45. So I'm 15 points in the lead. However, the Necron should pick up 15 points on their primaries at the end of the game. So 60 to 45 is really 60, 60 right now, if they pick up the 15. So it's all about these secondaries. I need to storm my hostile objective, take an objective off of the Necrons, and secure no man's land. Well, I've already got that at least. 
So in my command phase, I switched to assault weaponry and spent a couple of CP. One on motive imperative, so the Iron Strider Ballastari could turn around and run back down here and OC the Lich Guard off of that objective. We've got two, you've got one, and I've got more in range. And strangely enough, that is Storm hostile objective. And then I'm securing no man's land by having two objectives in no man's land. And I put a six up, feel no pain on this robot one more time. So I'm managing to score all of my secondaries. But uh, there's not going to be a lot of shooting coming out. We've got a couple of arc rifles firing at that doom stalker over there. And then lots of shots raining into the lich guard. So I fired in with the arc rifles at the doom stalker. Did nothing. Uh, down here to the Einstein Ballastari. Firing in at the lich guard. Hitting on fours. Um, that, does that do anything? It is. Sustained hits one. Threes to wound. I do up wound. <laughs> Four plus and vulnerable save. Would you make? I don't think the Iron Striders are long for this world. So they fired in, did nothing. The robot can't see anything. He's got his feel no pain. The idea is he just hangs out there. He's fine. All the doggos lining up and the vanguard. That's the end of my turn. Mm. That's the end of the Admech yeah. turn yeah. five. I'm trying to do what I can do. Do the voodoo that I do so well. So we're going to go on to Necron's turn five and see if they can draw this. See if, well, mm, it's close. It's close. So the Admech top out at 70 points. The Necrons are on 45. Now, if they pick up 15 on the primaries, 70, 60, which means 10 points behind, which means if they draw both secure, both of these objectives, the game will be a draw. No prisoners, kill as much as possible. Storm hostile objective, take an objective off of the Admech. So we did some reanimation, some warriors going back in here or there, and you're spending CP on protocol, the sudden storm, yep. to charge round, take that objective. Yeah. So, so see what happens. Yes. So they're moving nine inches. Nine. Does seven, that get them into range? Because you can re-roll it with protocol, the sudden storm. Okay, that was enough. So that's five points for Storm Hostile Objective. Now, you get two points for everything you kill, up to a maximum of five points. Yep. I don't okay. need to alarm you, <laughs> but you need to max that out. Right, okay. So if you well, kill three things, yeah. somehow, from some way, you've turned this, this, you've been on the back foot all game. Let's see what happens then, yeah. But you'll turn this yeah. game into a draw, and it'll be 70 points each. The Lich Guard moving around here, you've now got this objective. They want to go charging in. But where is the soft meat? Where are the three units that the Necrons can kill? So finally, we're at the end of the movement phase for the Necrons, and all they need to do is kill three units. Swamp Song, do you have a plan? Uh, yes, um, but maybe not the best plan in the world, but it's right. a plan, so yeah, we're gonna go with something. So, so long yeah. as you have a plan. Uh, yeah. You've lined up a lot of stuff that can shoot a lot of stuff, that can charge a lot of stuff. Where are we starting? We are going to start with the Doomstalker here. Yes. Find out into the breaches. Into see the breaches. That, see if we can clear that unit out. And, okay. Uh, see what happens. D6 plus one shots. We have four oh, shots, God. which hit on threes. Okay, we've got three hits. Two's to wound. All the wounds. So three wounds. Here's the six up and vulnerable saves on the two remaining breaches, which I failed both. All right, and they have feel no pains, so it could be okay. On the first one, it's okay. The second one, well, and the first one again, you're dead. Right, you killed one. Here's a six up and vulnerable save for the last shot, which I fail. Five up, feel no pains. He's on one wound. So heavy destroyer into the last breacher yep. on one wound. He hits, and he wounds on the two. He does wound. He wounds this time. Six up and better will save. No. Six feel no pains with one wound remaining. So you're telling me there's a chance. I wow. nearly <laughs> did it. Five sixes, but that is enough. That one. Right, that's your first unit dead. So warriors firing at robot one more time. Yep. 40 shots. No re-rolls this time, but threes to hit. Six is lethal. These wound already, these are sixes to wound. And these are all two up saves. It takes a wound again. One wound, one wound, one wound. Feel no pain. 
it feels it doesn't feel the pain okay. it's still on three wounds remaining you got another unit of warriors though that you move round. and um, i also have the royal warden oh yeah the royal his, warden he's, he's, he's got his two shots yeah royal warden hits on twos he's leading that unit they both hit wounds on fives no nope. doesn't wound okay we're on to um, warriors Nope, we're going to do the destroyers first. There's nine shots coming through here into the robot. And you're hitting on threes. Six is a lethal. You're re-rolling hits because he's in range of an objective. Of course, yeah, yeah. So you could fish for the sixes yeah, and re-roll everything if you want it. Yeah, let's do that again. Okay. Uh, well, there's another six. And these are five to wound. Five to wound. Okay. These are... Four up saves. This is six, uh, four feel no pains. He's got three left. I need to make two sixes to keep him alive. I don't make two sixes to keep him alive. Dead robot. And it doesn't blow up either. That is two units down. Makes it 69 points to 70. Okay. Kill one more unit. This game is a draw. Doomstalker yes. uh, going up into these guys. Okay. Well, again, I've already forgotten what they're called. Einstrider Ballastari. So that's the ones. Right, D6 plus one shots. Uh, you have got a CP if you want to re roll it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. re roll that one, last one. Uh, that is six shots. Take my own three. Yes. Strength 14 versus toughness 7, wounds on twos. Four wounds. Uh, invulnerable saves coming up. Of five up? I think it's five up. Uh, I make two. That is six damage. Mm. One's down to a one wound remaining. Then there's a couple of warriors here that can shoot through the trees into this unit. These are going to hit on threes. And there's a lethal hit. And the rest of the wounds on fives. Okay, one wound. On the guy on one wound. Three up save. He's alive. And okay. I think that's the end of your shooting phase. I think that is, yes, that's it. Unless your overlord has a shooting attack? No, he doesn't. He's no. got the res orb and the thing. Yes, yeah. So what you're telling me is, in order to bring this defeat back to a to the draw, it's about the Lich Guard charging yeah. these guys and killing them in close combat. Yep, yeah, we've got to get a reward for them. Overlord yes. for the win. Yep. Yeah. So let's go on to the fight phase. Okay, lots of attacks hitting on twos because the character's with them. Hyper phase swords for the win. And six versus toughness seven. Fives to wound. Lots of five plus invulnerable saves. Each turn a damage. I think it's just a damage. Uh, yeah, Kills one. one. Puts one down to two wounds remaining. The one that dies doesn't blow up. And you haven't killed that squad. And they'll kick you back. But uh, oh yeah, you've got the overlord. You've got the overlord. He's gonna do something. You've got the overlord. Overlord with the void dive, twos to hit. He hits all the times, it's strength 12. So threes to wound. Wounds twice, five up and vulnerable saves. That will kill that guy. There's still one Iron Strider Ballastari left yeah. alive. That one doesn't blow up, we've had no explosions. The Iron Strider Ballastari kicks back on fours. Wounds on threes, that's two wounds, two three up saves. It doesn't really matter at this stage because that's the last action of the game. You've managed to take out two units in turn five, but not that third extra unit for that sweet, sweet extra point. So at the end of the game, it'll be 69 points for the Necron, 70 points to the Admech. And this is the way the world ends. With the painting standard, 80 points to 79 points, the Pendant Forge win that battle by one point, and the Necrons disappear, translocate away, um, sink back underground under the forests and under the ooze. I have to say I was a bit terrified when I knew I was going against Necrons, but Swamp Song brought a nice narrative yeah. rounded awakened dynasty. Yeah. So thank you for going to it's pleasure. me. Absolute pleasure. What are you adding next to your lovely Necrons? Uh, I am currently working on a monolith. Right. Um, so They're good. Yeah, it's I've, I've had it sat for about six months right. waiting to be painted. So it's there. <laughs> um, and I'm well, it's going to have a tree growing out of the top of it. So, I love it. Yeah. A tree growing out of <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So when it's done. That's going to be on your YouTube channel when it's done. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm kind of being documenting the bits I've done up to this point. So right. at some point when I've got up to a certain 
stage of that, then yeah, I'll put something up. So if anybody's interested, then you know, you know come have a look at that. So, What's the YouTube channel again? It's uh, RGB Miniatures. RGB Miniatures. Yeah. Is that what you are on the Instagram as well? That's or what I have it, yeah, Instagram and on YouTube. So yeah. In the Discord, you have to change your thing to RGB Miniatures or something. Yeah. Because like, people get confused. I know, I know. I should really do that. Yeah. yeah. I'll do that. I'll and then an time, announcement yeah. video, I'm changing. I was in the swamp, but now we're <laughs> RGB. Yeah. Nice. I'd love to see a Necron a monolith with a with a tree growing out of it. You could put the death rays on it as well, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you've got to have that. You can't not. You can't. It's the best named weapon in the game. So, death. Yeah. Ray. Yeah, you have to. You have those. Definitely. And, anyway, yeah. thanks for coming down. It's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Really uh, it. It's only the second time I've ran out the Penitent Forge in the last three years. It was nice for them to. Uh, what was it like? Was it okay with the Necron? I mean, yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, I think. Um, I had some bad rolls at the beginning. Losing, yes. the night, losing the Nightbringer kind of was a bit of a problem. I think you made um, like ten percent of your invulnerable saves. Yeah, so that because I think if he'd if he'd survived, it would have been I would have the plan was to kind of get him up here yeah. and you know do some damage, and then heavy destroyer messing up a lot. Yeah. but <laughs> apart from that, I think it didn't went reasonably well. The warriors did a lot of work. I um, did expect the Nightbringer to be here. I didn't expect you to fail so many saves. Yeah, and then he would have been amongst the robots or the breaches and he would have controlled this. Yeah. yeah. Uh that would have been that would have been painful. The warriors are always good. Yeah, I was always I always take at least forty of them. They always take two two lots. So, you know, uh, I do like them. They're just very hard to shift and just the amount of the amount of shots you get out of them is yeah. you know, it's always worth taking. Yeah, I do like warriors, man. I, I I'm very it's hard to justify with me when I don't bring two squads of 20. Then I might bring some, lots of little squads of immortals instead. But I think warriors are one of the strongest things in the codex, as well as obviously Catans. Catans are really good. But yeah, I look forward to seeing your monolith with a tree growing out of the back of it. That is going to be epic. Thank you for coming down one more time. And thank you everyone for watching this video. Like, comment, share and subscribe any YouTube video that you listen to. It is like gold dust for us YouTube content creators. Um, poke the algorithm. Thank you for watching this video and happy wargaming.